Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are doing my September beauty favorites. That means it's October and I'm excited. The weather is cooling down. I really hate the heat. So I am taking in the upcoming fall season here. So if you want to see the products that I've been loving this month, then just keep watching. guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And these videos are one of my favorites because I try out so many products so I can really round up everything that I've been loving for the month and what has stood out. If you're familiar with my favorites videos, I normally start off with the channel of the month. A little bit different this month. As I was filming this video, Kelsey Brianna J uploaded her tribute video for Mel. If you don't know Kelsey, she was Mel Thompson's best friend. I'm going to link that video down below. Make sure you have some tissues near you if you haven't watched it. Really beautifully done by Kelsey and they were best friends and my heart goes out to Kelsey as well. So make sure you subscribe to Kelsey's channel. I will link her video and channel down below and I'm also going to link the GoFundMe page for Mel Thompson's family down below. Kelsey set that up. Obviously don't feel obligated to donate to it but I have had questions of how you guys can help. I think the GoFundMe is an option so it's just there if that's something that you want to do i would also say another great way to support mel's family is just to simply watch her videos like and comment and i know it will be so appreciated so all of those links will be down below let's get into the products i have one skincare item you guys and sometimes i will admit i can be a little picky about my skincare but this product is so good and it's affordable this is from elf i swear low-key elf has really good skincare this is the holy hydration face cream and they've had this before but this one now has spf 30 in it and i swear the texture of this is better I love this. It does have a slight fragrance to it. It's nothing that irritates me, but that's not something that I look for really. So there's a slight fragrance, but honestly, the cream just feels so luxurious. I love the way that it just soaks into the skin and hydrates it. And I've been leaving this out on my desk just to apply before makeup application. And it does a great job prepping the skin, keeping the skin hydrated throughout the day. I do have normal to dry skin, leaning more dry in the winter or if I'm not properly taking taking care of it and I just think that this is such a great value. You get a really quality moisturizer for a very affordable price and e.l.f. just did a phenomenal job with this moisturizer. I highly recommend it. Next up, I have a couple of concealers. I tried out quite a few concealers this month and there were two that stood out on top of all the others. So the first one, not necessarily <laughs> recommending it to you, it's $90, but if you've been watching my channel, I've been sneaking in this dang Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Concealer. It's $90, but I love it. Like, I really, really love it, you guys. It's a little bit luminous on the under eyes. Nothing crazy. It's more of like a luminous matte, I would say. But it just blends over the skin beautifully. And the wear on this, phenomenal. Doesn't dry out the under eyes. Doesn't leave the under eyes looking really creasy. Honestly, I think this is a great liquid concealer for more mature skin or drier under eyes. I just think the wear of this is what is beating out other concealers. Because the next concealer I'm going to talk about looks, I would say, as good as the Tom Ford. But the Tom Ford wears better. However, it is $90. I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy it. No concealer is worth $90 unless it is plastic surgery itself. But if you have the money, I I love this concealer. <laughs> the next concealer is very, very comparable to the Tom Ford. This is the ABH concealer. It is awesome. This has the most giant doe foot. It's a very interesting size here. I don't know if you can see the hook. I don't know, but this concealer so smooth over the skin. It's not as luminous as the Tom Ford, but I find that they perform very similarly and they spread out very similarly. I just think the Tom Ford withstands time a little bit better, but this is like $30. The Tom Ford is three times the price, so if you're concerned about the price, definitely go for the ABH there. It's not a $60 difference in performance. That's what I'm gonna say. Definitely not. That's why 
I would almost recommend the ABH over the Tom Ford just because of that price difference, but they both are phenomenal, phenomenal concealers. I'm wearing the Tom Ford today. I meant to do half and half, but like without thinking about it, I just put concealer under both eyes and I was like, no going back now, but yeah, <laughs> those two concealers really awesome. This next product is not new, but I've been grabbing for it over all of my other powders. It's just so universal. It works with really any product that I'm wearing on my face. This is the Kosas Cloud Set Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Feathery. I love this powder. It really is so versatile and I've told you guys that I've liked it since the beginning. It's awesome but it's really just something that I've been grabbing for over all of my other powders because no matter what I'm using it's going to work good to set it. It smooths the skin. It doesn't look too heavy on the skin. I don't know it doesn't look really good. It's really really nice. It's a little bit smoothing and I think because it's a little bit more powdery because I compared this to the Dior powder. Uh, that one is a little bit more gel like whereas this one is a little bit more powdery. I prefer the the Dior, I would say because I have dry skin, so that one's a bit more hydrating. If you have a little bit more oils, this one is really, really great because it does a nice job with longevity of sucking in the oils as the day goes on. And it's just a really solid setting powder. I don't know what else to say about it, but I really like it. And I've been using it all month over all of my other setting powders. Okay, <laughs> I mean, this one was a really, really predictable choice here, but you guys know I'm obsessed with the Hourglass Ambient Palettes every year. I picked up both of them. If you want to see my review and comparisons on these, I do have that on my channel if you're curious. But both of these are super good. So they have two palettes this year. One is made for lighter skin tones. One is made for deeper skin tones. I really like the lighter one here, even though it looks like bacon, uh, raw bacon at the hats. But this is the cheek palette that I'm wearing today. And these are just so easy to use, so easy to grab for. I went away a couple times this month for like staycations, things like that. I brought this with me, okay? And it's just so easy. It saves space. The packaging is nice and sturdy. I like that it's metal. I just, I like it. This palette as a whole, I would say, is a little bit more rosy. It's definitely going to work for lighter skin tones. And even down to fair. The Unlocked palette is the one for deeper skin tones. I would say this is best geared towards tan and medium skin tones. This is perfect for you guys. But I know a lot of you with lighter skin have actually preferred this palette because it is a bit different. For one, it has this awesome setting powder here, whereas in the lighter one, it has one that has like too much glitter in it. I used it today as a finishing powder um, and it's still like, I looked glittery. I'm not a big fan of that shade. So take that shade out. The other shades are awesome. But what is great about the darker one is it just has their normal finishing powder, which is a lot more flattering to the skin. It has a strobe highlight, which is a little bit more metallic. However, this highlight is too dark on me. Definitely not made for my skin tone, but I'm telling you, if you have a medium skin tone, I really think you would love this palette. They both are great though, and I can make both work for my skin tone, but I will be giving this one to my mom just because it's gonna work so good for her. I don't have a use for it really. I'm gonna keep this one. I really love it. I love the colors. I love the formula. I love how easy everything is to apply, and I do think that these are better than last year's. Last year's... <sighs> It was good, they're always good, but it wasn't my favorite mix of colors. I like how this year's is set up. It's sad that there's only five shades as opposed to the six that were in last year's, but I'm still very happy with these. I love the blush tones in particular. And that's all for face. Let's move on to eyes. Very heavy on eyes in the video. This was pretty tough, but we'll start off with eyebrows. Not a new product, but one that I semi-rediscovered. I kind of bought it a couple months ago. I was like, oh, it's nice, and I threw it in a drawer and I moved on with my life. I picked this up at the beginning of the month and I cannot put it down. <laughs> this is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. And you guys know I'm not really into feather brows on myself. I just, I, f I feel like I look like I went through a wind tunnel and it's, it's not very cute. But if there's any way for me to get a feather brow that I like, it's with this one. I like a toned down one, like you can see. I do love how this controls where my brow hairs go. It separates the brows because of the brush applicator itself. It makes the eyebrows look really thick because it separates them so flattering. Oh my goodness, it just looks so good. And it keeps the brows glued down. Like this is 
close to glue, I'm convinced. It even, I don't know if you guys saw my demo, like, ugh, it globs out like glue. It, I don't really love that factor about it, but my eyebrows don't go anywhere. I love how it brushes and separates the hairs on my eye. It's the best brow gel. This has shot up to arguably my number one favorite. I think I prefer something a little less heavy for every day or certain occasions so this is a little bit too heavy sometimes but when i want my brows to listen to me this is how they would listen to me so if you have really thick curly stubborn eyebrows this one is worth a try it will literally tame your brows and brush them out so it's like glue but if you're looking for something super duper intense, the ABH freeze brow gel thing in the pot, that is crazy controlling. I much prefer this. <laughs> it's a little bit lighter. All of this other stuff was fine and dandy, but I've gotta be honest, September, was the best month hands down for eyeshadow palette releases point blank no other month so uh, let me tell you that my monthly palette rankings that i'm gonna film next week it's going to be intense i might cry i don't know how i'm gonna do it so for now i'm just gonna i picked out a few palettes but i'm sitting here with regret because i'm i'm not featuring the two charlotte tilbury palettes that i tried this month which were bomb fire but i just don't know how i'm gonna rank them so i don't know maybe those will be number one i don't know but these at the very least are the ones that i've spent the most time playing with so the first one the duh, 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 duh we have the pat mcgrath celestial odyssey palette i said in my review that i preferred last year's but it don't matter because i still really like this one honestly even though i prefer the color story from last year's i think i would probably reach for this one more in terms of wearing because it has like really good tones to wear neutral everyday looks even though i come on camera wearing looks like these if i'm not on camera and i'm running errands or doing boring stuff i put on boring everyday kind of makeup it's not worth the time in any other way i see myself grabbing for this one a lot more because of that but you also have the fun pops the quality is great not a single dud i did a three looks one palette video i could do a billion more looks with this this palette is so versatile but anyways this palette is beautiful it's worth every penny i think it's one of the best pat mcgrath palettes to start off with in terms of value in terms of colors story i mean it's a given like you know i was gonna talk about this right you knew that okay let's move on to the next one another like duh one so <laughs> the natasha denona retro palette came out of the or i tried it at the very 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 do i have pit stains no good you guys tmi but one of the sweatiest parts of my body is my armpits like i don't even be hot in my anyways <laughs> back to the point. I tried this in the beginning of the month, so I've had it for a while. I did a lot of looks with this one as well. This one is a little bit more wearable for me compared to the Pat McGrath, but like this, you guys know, is my kind of palette. It's mauvey, pinky, purples. It's a gorgeous palette all around. Again, I feel like not the looks that I can do are endless, but within one color family, I feel like I can do a lot of looks with this. And just generally speaking, this is a color story that I find to be very flattering. I'm very comfortable with it. Natasha Denona picked a great selection of colors here. Great quality one of my favorites i don't think this one is going to be everybody's cup of tea honestly this color story is not pinpointed for everybody but for me it was pointed in my direction and i love this one this one is a good one i feel like this came out so long ago so many releases came out this month that this feels like it should have been in last month's video because i haven't used this in a good two weeks because of all the new releases but i love it it's so good okay the last one even though i love a lot more palettes <laughs> than this is month but this collection in particular really just stood out to me because of how special the shades are the formula is and that is the odin's eye collection where they collaborated with three lovely creators so we have tina over at fancy face who created the hummingbird palette i haven't yet created a dedicated look for this palette i've taken a few of the colors from the palette and incorporated them into my looks but this is a very very colorful one so if you're into colors i think you would really like this but this is next on my calendar to create a look with and then we'll talk about the one that I'm wearing right now which is giant wolves which is a collaboration with Annette's makeup corner I was going to use the hummingbird palette because it's so colorful today but then I looked at the vibe of my outfit and it's 
I wanted to do something a little bit more grungy and if you're into grungy tones giant wolves is definitely the way to go you can see that I stuck to just the top three colors and then the black for this look to create the green because I thought it would go with my outfit but I want to play with this lower half of the palette so bad the colors look super pretty and then I did a couple looks with the red dragon palette which was a collaboration with Judy oh my gosh I created one of my favorite looks I've done in the longest time with this palette I put it in my fall palette video because I think it's a beautiful palette for fall while containing very unique tones I think all three of these are great additions to your collection I can't name really any other palettes that look like these and then the formula on top of it all I think this is the best formulation that Odin's eye has done as well the shimmers are so impactful and glittery dimensional each palette contains a multi chrome shadow I mean you can see all of the dimension on my eyes all of the matte shades blend really beautifully and the best thing if you purchase these you are supporting really great creators that aside even if these weren't a collaboration literally these are the prettiest color stories so I'm still having a lot of fun with these these are awesome I definitely feel like I'm missing some good eyeshadow palettes but for my mental strength let's move on to lips I only have one lip product Kaleidos earlier in the month came out with their apple collection which contained new shades of their lab clay lip formula which I love them you guys they're great for mask wearing they're really really comfortable I got all of the shades sent to me but I'm so boring with lips I like the wearable colors so I've been loving the shades shade nude. I'm going to show you it in the demo because I kind of changed it for today's look. Uh, but these are kind of like a souffle formula but they're quite hydrating as well they last a really long time this one has a pinky tone to it it's one of the more neutral wearable shades in this collection but i just love having this in my purse really comfortable really wearable for today i do have it right now as the base color but i did want to neutralize it a little bit just to go with my outfit and my look so on top of it i put on staycation from huda beauty and then a little bit of the bobby brown in west coast bay but this was strictly to neutralize it for my outfit but other than that, I've been rocking this to brighten up my face, to add some color to my face. These are phenomenal lip formula to look into. And I have one last and final product, and that is for my hair. I've slowly been trying out a lot of different hair products, and I don't know. I'm still debating if I need to do an updated hair routine. Let me play with my new products first to see if I have a new routine, but I used the Briogeo hair cream. I don't know if that video is up yet, but I have a haul coming up and I use a Briogeo hair gel and I think this is second day curls. They're a little frizzy, but not bad because normally <laughs> second day hair don't work on me. But anyways, once I finalize my hair routine, I'll finally film that for you guys. So I have the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Vegan Apple Honey Deep Conditioning Mask. And of course, yes, a selling point to me was this cute little bear, which honestly, the bear, I don't I don't know I find it hard to squeeze product out of but I suppose it's worth it this smells phenomenal and my hair's been extra dry because I've been using a really cheap bad conditioner and I've been too lazy to purchase a new one so this is actually like a hair mask I've been using it kind of as just a regular conditioner I, I will let it sit in my hair but anyways done wonders like, I need to let it sit in my hair longer. My hair is shinier. It feels much more moisturized. And I have very dry hair, you guys. It's a con of having curly hair and using all the product that I do. But this is really nice. So if you're looking for a good hair mask, Briogeo has not disappointed me. This is a great hair mask. And it smells super good. All right, you guys. There we have it. Those were all of the products that I've been loving this month of September. Again, make sure you check out all of my links down below, particularly Kelsey's page as well as Mal Thompson's GoFundMe page. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video and for all of your continued support. Bye, guys. Have a good one.